Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is the place where we made the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So now, we're going to be dealing with adrenal medulla. Okay? So we've already dealt with the adrenal cortex majorly the zona glomerulosa that releases aldosterone the zona fasciculata that releases cortisol so now we want to focus on the adrenal medulla and this is very very easy if you've done autonomic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system this is a walkover for you you know why because the adrenal medulla is a modified let's let's write it here a modified ganglion okay so those exactly the same function with the sympathetic nervous system a branch of the autonomic nervous system all right so how does the sympathetic nervous system just a brief review you know it's from the thoracic to the lumbar region of the spinal cord so you have t1 to l2 okay that's where they originate from so that's why it's called thoraco thoraco lumbar outflow now when these nerves come out from the spinal cord they are known as preganglionic preganglionic okay so they go like this they come let's say this is a spinal cord they come out from the spinal cord like this and they now form a ganglion they form a ganglion so this is the preganglionic nerve why after the ganglion it is known as post ganglionic so this ganglion is just a collection of nerve bodies so why are we talking a modified sympathetic ganglion is the fact that preganglionic neurons come from the spinal cord in this thoracolumbar outflow and they supply the adrenal medulla do you understand? It has pregangonic neurons that supply the adrenal medulla. But the only difference is that there is no post-ganglionic neuron. It just stops here. Do you understand? All pregangonic neuron, whether it's from the sympathetic or parasympathetic, at this place they secrete acetylcholine okay acetylcholine then in sympathetic neurons the postganglionic neurons they secrete two substances no epinephrine and epinephrine This two they have another name, okay? Norepinephrine is also known as noradrenaline. Okay. So the postganglionic is secret, but this one it's a modified sympathetic ganglion in the sense that it does not have a postganglionic neuron, it just secretes these two substances directly from this ganglion into the bloodstream do you get it now instead of being wired like this through nerves to supply different organs and then secrete these things in the specific organs and tissues that is innervating it just secretes this directly into the blood without you using so it's just something like wireless you have a microphone like this that's connected to a wire and you have some that it's not connected to a wire to any other device wireless so 
this one operates like a wireless form of a sympathetic nervous system. Do you get it? So that's that's the difference. If not, it's the same norepinephrine neurotransmitters, okay, that they secrete. Now, it's very important to know about the synthesis. It has just about four steps and it is synthesized from what? Tyrosine. So it's part that tyrosine is an amino acid. Okay, it's grouped under the group of hormones called amines from amino acid. Okay, so they also have another name, these two called catecholamines because the structure has a catechol ring that are attached different chemical elements. Okay, so these two they are also known as catecholamines. Catechol amines. Catechol and amine. Okay. Now, how 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 are they secreted? Let's let's do a brief. You have tyrosine here. Tyrosine. Then there are three major processes. You have hydroxylation, decarboxylation and methylation. So let's see how it happens. From tyrosine, hydroxylation takes place, catalyzed by the enzyme known as tyrosine hydroxylase. Okay, to give you what? It gives you, let me, let me write it in a very special way. Okay, dihydroxyphenylalanine. I use the red pen to highlight some letters there. And what does it give you? DOPA. Sounds like the name of this channel, Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA. So it's also known as DOPA for short. DOPA. Okay, very common name. So tyrosine hydroxylate converts tyrosine to DOPA. Okay, then another enzyme acts and converts what the dopa into dopamine. So you have here dopa decarboxylase, dopa decarboxylase to give you dopamine. Okay, then the next step you have dopamine hydroxylase a hydroxylation takes place dopamine hydroxylase to now give you no epinephrine and then the final step to give you epinephrine is now methylation to give you epinephrine The name of that enzyme is quite long for short it's called pnmt okay pnmt what's pnmt very long name it's called phenyl ethanolamine n metal transferase let's write it here phenyl then write ethanol okay and Thanol, then amine, amine, then you, you have N methyl transferase. Okay, phenyl ethylamine N methyl transferase. So that's the name of this PNMT that converts norepinephrine to epinephrine. And this enzyme is very abundant. That's why in the bloodstream you have more of epinephrine than norepinephrine. So about 80% of catecholamines are in the form of epinephrine rather than norepinephrine. But they do virtually the same, similar functions. Okay, so this is the, the synthesis. So the next thing you're going to be asking yourself, what is the function? 
what are the functions of the catecholamines. I'm going to be looking at that after this break. All right, you're welcome back. So now we're going to be dealing with the functions, the functions of the catecholamines. So it's not different from the functions of the sympathetic nervous system. And if there's anything that is very, very common about the sympathetic system is the fact that they help, they enable fight or flight actions. It has to enable you to fight or enable you to run. Do you understand? For emergency situations. So, if you want to summarize the functions, is flight or fight. That's it. Flight or fight. So, anything that will make it successful for you to be able to fight more effectively or to run more effectively away from danger, a lion just jumps into the room. What do you do? Whatever it will take for you to be able to cope, that to run or to fight that lion. The adjustments in your body. That's what these two hormones are for. So let's 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 look at them. Now you are about to fight or you're about to run. Okay? What will happen? Do you you need to see where? You understand you need to see where you're going so you need very good vision to be able to see where you're going to your destination so what does it do so these hormones they have they do what pupillary dilation they dilate your people so you can see better so one of the things in the eyes pupillary dilation okay pupillary dilation what of the heart the heart what do you think will happen you want to run your heart will need to beat faster okay because you are using a lot of energy and there needs to be blood supply increased blood supply to supply a lot of oxygen and a lot of glucose to the tissues of your body so there's increased need for blood flow so the heart will do what we pump stronger and faster so there's increased heart rate and force of contraction. You see, it's very straightforward, very easy. It's increased heart rate and force of contraction, which of course, when you, this thing put them together, it increases blood pressure. There's cardiac output, which increases blood pressure. Okay, then now, blood vessels what happens generally the cutaneous blood vessels the blood vessels that supply the skin they constrict them because when you are in a dangerous situation fighting or running maybe grasses can scratch your hand or the person as you are fighting can injure yourself to prevent so much blood loss this they will reduce the supply of blood to your skin Okay, so there's cutaneous blood vessels are very constricted. Blood vessels, cutaneous blood vessels. Constriction of cutaneous blood vessels especially and some other blood vessels. Okay, and so on. Then the exception is the blood vessels that supply muscles. There's vasodilation. Of the vessels that supply muscles the effect of this particular means why because your muscles are doing a lot of work running exercising so they need more blood supply to supply oxygen and glucose they need energy and resources so there's dilation vasodilation the blood vessels that supply the muscles so you see how it's 
operates. Very easy to know. So these are the, some of the things you need to know. Anything that aids fight or flight. Okay, so they do what? They aid the hyperglycemia, gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis to release glucose into the system, the bloodstream. Because that's what you need. Okay, so they also increase your rate of breathing and all of that and so on and so forth. So those are the actions of norepinephrine. Now let's go to the metabolism. The metabolism, how is it broken down? Okay, because these ones they are released into the bloodstream, not like sympathetic nerves that supply directly. They are not released into the bloodstream, specific for where they are. But this one is released into the bloodstream. They need to be degraded. If not, it will last too long. That's the major difference between this and sympathetic. They last longer. Their effects last longer. Okay, so they need to be degraded. And the two ways in which they are degraded is through methoxylation. Methoxylation and oxidation. Okay, the details are in the book. Okay, so this norepinephrine and epinephrine, they become metanephrine and non-metanephrine. Then oxidation through what is known as mono monoamine oxidase okay monoamine oxidase mao for short so that's what then so many other steps to now give you vanillyl mandelic acid that is now excreted in the urine vanillyl vanillyl mandelic mandelic acid okay v m a vanillin mandelic acid so sometimes when young people you notice that they have high blood pressure higher than most times people that have that that are hypertensive actually middle age people old older people when you find someone that is 17 years old 21 years old already hypertensive one of the very first suspicions is probably they say tumor of the adrenal medulla and the cells of the adrenal medulla I forgot to mention that they are called chromaffin cells chromaffin cells or what fiochrome cells fiochrome well, these are the two names this cells that secrete these things so when there is a tumor the tumor is known as pheochromocytoma okay pheochromo pheochromocytoma which releases a lot of catecholamines so how do they check it they check your urine and when they see high levels of vma vanillin mandelic acid it's evidence that there is too much there might be a tumor pheochromocytoma and then they have to deal with it okay so that's some of the things you need to know about adrenal medulla it's, it's very easy stuff the only difference between sympathetic nervous system you can review the text on sympathetic nervous system the functions and all of that the effect the functions on all the different organs it has function even on the git okay does not it it acts against because when you are for example you are fighting or running that's not the best time for your digestive system to operate so it prevents peristalsis okay and secretion of all those digestive enzymes and all of that the bladder it prevents urination that's not the best time to urinate so it prevents the contraction of the blood and all and all of that okay so that that's it difference is just the how long they act this act more powerfully okay more powerfully they last longer so that's basically what you need to know so we're going to see you in the next video